Day 24 of lockdown, giving way to day 25. We'll have done at least 45 days of total lockdown before this is over, the government confirmed today. It was inevitable and remarkable, perhaps, that it no longer seems remarkable. Britain is to remain in confinement behind our own front doors till the 7th of May. Based on this advice, which we very carefully considered, the government has decided that the current measures must remain in place for at least the next three weeks. Dominic Raab announced five tests, which governments say must be met until any relaxation will be granted. The government is looking for evidence that the NHS can cope across the UK, a sustained fall in daily death rates, evidence that the rate of infection is decreasing, confidence that the medical system is able to meet demand, and no risk of a second peak. But there was encouraging news too. The government scientists think that our average infection rate, our value, is now below one. Our value is really important. Put simply, it's the number of people an infected person in turn comes to infect. If our value falls below one, it means that each person is infecting less than one other. So the overall transmission of the disease in the population should go down. If it's more than one, it goes up. Other places like Germany, Austria, Norway and Denmark have focused heavily on our value. It was when it dipped below one in these places that governments started to talk about relaxation of lockdowns. Not so here, for a very simple reason. We're not testing enough. They can use proxy indicators to try and understand where we are currently and what the reproductive number is currently, such as looking at hospitalisation numbers, mortality numbers, looking at some of their sentinel sites to understand uh, kind of communities, uh, particular communities, uh, how it's spreading. But I don't see how they can say it decisively until they have these antibody tests in the community. So that first mistake of not getting ahead of testing at the start returns once more to haunt us. But the other reason perhaps that Britain isn't showing more leg on exit strategy compared to other governments isn't scientific, it's political. The Prime Minister is in convalescence. And for as much as we might hear about cabinet government and collective responsibility, it seems unlikely that ministers will be willing to pull on those really big levers until he's back in action. These weeks are primarily about allowing time for the virus to recede further but it's also a very useful time, politically, for the Prime Minister to get better. But questions of when and how will continue to grow louder as the other human crisis gathers pace. What's going on in the economy? Something of which Tory backbenchers are increasingly mindful. Well, I think the, uh, the, real, the real question is we need to ensure that bounce back happens straight after coronavirus. Because if it's a, if it's a blip for three months uh, in the figures, then that's one thing. And I think that's something that we obviously can... Uh, look at it will be difficult it will add to the national debt but um, that's something that uh, is, is manageable I think the entire the, the real issue here and which why the lockdown is so important that we get it right first time round and we don't end up with that second spike which is why it's so important that we just carry on and get it exactly right now is that um, if we can get that then we can probably uh, keep on with the broader agenda that the government's pursuing the economic catastrophe is real. Data from the US today showed another 5.2 million Americans have applied for unemployment benefit in the last week. That's 22 million in a month, more than all the jobs created since 2008. One in six of the American labour force are now out of work. In Britain, we've seen 1.4 million apply for universal credit, but we're not at stratospheric levels yet, for a very good reason, the furlough scheme. The whole goal of the government's programme is to not just keep people in work, but keep companies solvent. Now, if we get to the end of this and they are still solvent and the degree of the lifting of the measures allows companies to get some, some way towards normality, then we could hope that all these people who are furloughed will more or less keep their jobs. But that is a huge question mark. And we know already, we've seen the numbers, a lot of companies that perhaps were relying on the furlough scheme are not going to exist when, when the lockdown finishes. 45 days to save the NHS and save lives, but at the cost of house arrest for the population and life support for the economy. It'll be VE day before this might be lifted, even a little, but victory this time won't come with a parade or soldiers, just people quietly, tentatively, almost certainly in fear, trying to resume their lives. <laughs>